Hey everybody, welcome to Bean of the Week. We're going to be making something with the 15 bean combination today. I actually have some of the 15 beans that I cooked. So they're they're ready, they're in this uh, colander. Oops. Just dripped all over everything, that was really smart. I need to get a paper towel now. Let me get one real quick, hold on. So, if you don't have 15 beans, I see some people coming on, Patty, Lisa, hi everybody. If you don't have 15 beans to make 15 bean soup, hi Pam Belnofsky, then um, just use whatever beans you feel like using. I'm gonna list the beans that are in my 15 bean blend. I have pinto, black beans, pink city beans, buckeye beans, scarlet runner, garbanzo, caballero, cranberry, flor de mayo, bio chocolate, black eyed peas, black beans, flagellet beans, and mayacoba beans. I had the ayacote amarillo beans in here and I took them out because those are the ones I made. I know, this, Turn my pan down a little bit. Those are the ones I made in a previous bean of the week and they took forever. So I took them out of here. So I have, really have 14 beans. But the idea here is, you know, we're making this multi bean soup. So hi, Terry Malnar. I haven't seen your sushi yet. So I wanna see that. Uh, I need to go back and look at, I haven't looked at the support group in a while, but here's my 15 beans you can see all the different beans in here. I cooked these for a couple hours earlier today and they cooked up really nicely. They're all done, they're all tender. Um, and I did take care to soak these beans longer than I soak the beans normally. Normally I would soak the beans for five or six hours, but this time I soaked the beans overnight. I actually soaked them probably Oh, let's see, I probably soaked them 12 hours, which is double the time I normally soak them because some of the beans are the kind that take longer to cook. So I knew they wouldn't be ready in time. And so my 15 bean soup recipe is one of those recipes that you can custom tailor to whatever you want to put in your soup, okay? So today I'm gonna put some basic ingredients in mine. I'll show you what they are. And I've already cooked the soup with um, some carrot, celery, onion, and garlic, like I always, I mean, I've cooked the beans, just like I always cook beans, the same old Rancho Gordo bean recipe, but for the 15 bean soup, I'm gonna add some more of some of the same ingredients. You can see I've got some tomatoes, uh, carrots, celery, onions, garlic, and then we have some other options. What other options do we have? Uh, for this soup, I'm gonna, one thing I'm going to add is I have my breakfast tofu left from my class the other day. I made, um, I called it breakfast tofu, and it's kind of like a sweet tofu. It has maple syrup, and it has uh, other stuff in it, a little liquid smoke, but it tastes kind of like ham. And I was tasting it thinking, oh, if I cut this up really small and sprinkle it on top of my soup, it would give it that little, um, additional thing, like a little chewy, meaty kind of a thing, but I'm not gonna put it in the soup because what I've learned is that if you put tofu type things in your soup, they get real pale and they cook to where they don't really taste very good. So what I found is if you wanna put some kind of tofu meat with your beans or soup, is just sprinkle it on the top right when you eat it and then it'll taste like you know the marinated good tofu that it is, it won't just get watered down. So that's what I would do. And then the other thing I might do, haven't decided yet, is I have this pasta that I used for my minestrone soup. And it's an Italian little soup pasta, so it's really small. It's um, kind of a, a really cute, there it goes. It's this real small pasta, and um, it tastes really good in soup, so I might, boil some of this and then um, when I serve the bean, the 15 bean soup, put a handful of pasta in it. I won't cook the pasta in it. Hi Andrea Zuber, hi Amy Jo Moore. I won't cook the pasta in the soup because when you cook pasta in the soup it swells up. 
And then when it swells up, you just have this big soggy mess. So I have my onion. So with this soup, we're just gonna take a cup of chopped onion. I have some onion that I had already um, peeled and just didn't use. Uh, I wonder how things are. Um, in Fort Worth, we are going through this real cold snap. Everything is covered with snow. I can show you out here on the side where usually you would see out my window. It's all covered with snow. There's my birds are still out there, but you can see the snow. And then if I take you over to this side, out this window, this is a, it's like a winter wonderland. It's frozen to the point where you can't really see anything, but our swimming pool is frozen. In fact, I'm gonna take you over there and show you because it's so bizarre. I'm gonna uh, turn the camera around and show you that there are actual big icicles on the swimming pool. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to see it. Sorry, you guys. I'm having trouble finding the spot I wanna show you. But I think you get the picture that it's just like a frozen wasteland out here and everything is just icy and it, you know it's down to like eight degrees and we haven't lost power but a lot of people that I know have lost power and two of my kids my two sons they live uh, about half an hour away from here and they have no power and so their houses are down to like uh, 50 degrees inside and uh, my one son was just here getting some firewood. I'm just cutting up this onion. He was over here a few minutes ago collecting firewood for his house because he has a fireplace. So at least he was, they were keeping warm, sitting around the fire and they were heating stuff up in the fireplace. So he was fine. He said they didn't, you know, they didn't need anything and he was just gonna go back and they were gonna build their fire and everything was gonna be fine phone call unsolicited and then the other son said his house was in the 50s so he's probably going to have to use his fireplace or something but they kept saying the power was going to come right back on but then it didn't come back on it's been off since early this morning but I offered them all to come over here and hang out so I've got plenty of room plenty of guest rooms the problem is the roads are so bad. Nobody wants to drive on the roads because they're slippery and icy and treacherous. And so nobody wants to get out on the roads. I've got my skillet right here. I've got my Valentine's Day skillet. My husband got me for Valentine's Day. It um, is a matching skillet to the, the pot. So I have the, you see me cooking this four and a half quart pot, so he got me a skillet that looks just like that pot. That was nice of him. I told him not to get me flowers. I said, you know, don't, you know, flowers are expensive on Valentine's Day. Like, I guess they know that men are gonna get flowers for their wives, so they charge a lot for them. You know, like he was telling me that he went over, he couldn't go to the usual place where he gets flowers and the place he went, the flowers were like a hundred and, I think he said a hundred and sixty dollars for a flower arrangement. I said, that's ridiculous. Don't waste your money on that. So I was just teasing him and I said, I don't need a, I don't need flowers. Get me a, a skillet or something. And so he got me a skillet, which I think is a really practical gift. It's great. So I've got my onions cooking here, and then we're gonna put throw in some carrots. Now I've got them in a skillet, and even though you, I could cook all this stuff in here, I don't have to use a skillet. I could just cook my vegetables in the four and a half quart pot that I'm gonna use anyway. But the reason I'm not doing that and I'm cooking it in the skillet is because it's quicker. It will just cook quicker. Let's see, um, Aldi, $3.99, I guess that's flowers. But uh, yeah, it's they just rip people off. So anyway, we're making this soup with the 15 bean blend. So if you have been saving your beans, which is what I did, 
Like every time, you know, you guys have watched me do all these Rancho Gordo bean demonstrations. So every time I would open up a bag of Rancho Gordo beans, I would put uh, like a little handful in this jar. And then pretty soon I had 14 kinds of beans. Actually, I had 15, but I took some out because they're the kind that uh, take too long to cook. So I didn't want to cook those because that would be a disaster. They would still be, there was, they were the, called the Ayacote Amarillo beans. And I thought, no, you know, we'll still be waiting for those beans to cook and they're never going to cook. So um, I took those out of there, but all the other ones cook like normal beans. So it's really 14 bean soup, but when you go to the grocery store, they sell bags of 15 bean soup. I know you've probably seen it. I have never bought that, and I've never made that. Isn't that funny? It just never occurred to me to try it. It didn't sound good. Too many different things. And then, um, you know, people have, have done things where they make that kind of stuff in their Instant Pot. And I have not had very good luck with Instant Pot beans like that. Uh, some people will post all these Instant Pot bean recipes, you know, where they mix all these different things up. And then I've made their Instant Pot bean recipe. And all I, at the end result is just a bunch of mushy beans that have no flavor. And I don't really like those. So I think that if you go to the extra trouble to make your beans fresh, you know, on the stove, they're better. Maybe the crock pot. Sometimes the um, Instant Pot, I think it just turns everything into kind of too soft of a texture, just for me. Although certain beans I've had good success with in the Instant Pot are black beans and garbanzo beans. So when I made the uh, chickpeas for the uh, hummus or the chickpea spread, cooking the chickpeas in the Instant Pot worked out great. So those are two examples of beans that tend to do really well in the Instant Pot, garbanzo beans and black beans. But for the softer beans like pinto beans and white beans and just regular Rancho Gordo beans, I find they cook just fine in the regular pot, just you know on the stove. But right now what I'm doing is I'm cooking all these things in a skillet. You can see it, it's just because it's a lot faster cooked in the skillet been uh, cooked in that little pot. There's, you know, 12 inches of surface area as opposed to just a few inches. So that's why I do it that way. It just, it works for me. And I'll get all this cooked in no time and then, you know, it'll be ready for the soup. And so that's really it. Carrot, celery, onions. Um, I've got some bay leaves I'll throw in there. And then uh, some couple of garlic cloves. Here's my bay leaves. And then you can really Take this and customize it any way you want. So, you know, we could take any spice blend, anything. I'm gonna put some tomatoes in here. I said in my instructions to have a 28 ounce can of canned tomatoes. And so I went to get my tomatoes and I didn't have that uh, amount of tomatoes in my cabinet. And the weather's kind of bad, so I sure don't wanna to go to the store. So about the best I could come up with for tomatoes today, I'm taking some garlic and I'm cutting the hard end off. And then I just press it with my knife. And that, what that does is that just peels the skin right off. And then we have easy to peel, easy to cut garlic. Two really good sized cloves. You could put more if you wanted, but that's all I'm putting in mine. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the, so the options that I had were things like, I had tomato puree, and I had rotel, and then, oh, there's a squirrel. I had some chopped tomatoes, these Mexican-style chopped tomatoes with some green chilies. So I'm going to use these. I opened these. I thought they sounded good. And I'm not going to put a 28-ounce can in here because I don't have a 28-ounce can. And it will be fine because I don't really like too strong of a taste of tomatoes in my soup anyway. That's just me. That's not my thing. So now that I've let my vegetables brown, let's see, Angela, Brenda, hello. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of broth 
stock in my skillet. And then I'm going to put the lid on and let this cook down while I'm chopping up the garlic. That's just the way I do it because that kind of softens up the vegetables really nicely. So let's say that you have some other vegetables that you want to use up. This uh, 15 bean soup is really good for that. So I have some zucchini and bell peppers and some uh, cut up vegetables in the fridge. I could have brought those in and put them in here, but I didn't, but that would have worked out fine. So this soup is a good one where you can add um, kind of scrap vegetables. We could put corn in here, uh, just anything. So with bean soups, they're a good way to use up leftovers, right? So I've got the heat cranked up to about medium and I've got the lid on here because I want to soften my vegetables before I add them to the beans. And then I'm going to take the beans and put them in this pot because, you know, I didn't cook them in this pot. I cooked them in a different pot. So I've got the beans that I cooked and I'm not using the bean juice, the broth for these beans because um, I don't think it's very good. Most of the time I like the bean broth but this time, the bean broth, I'm going to put it in a bowl where you can see it better. I tested the bean broth just to see if I wanted to use it. And it, um, when you make like a 15 bean soup, then it's going to have black beans in there and other kinds of beans. So the bean broth looks like this. It's very dark, okay? It's a murky color, almost kind of blackish gray. And it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste great. It's just not my favorite tasting bean broth. So normally I like, you know, the broth created by beans, but this is one time where I, you know, I tasted it and thought, nah, I don't really like that. I'm gonna make a new um, soup from this and not use the bean broth. I'm gonna use the beans and the beans, you know, they came out really well. They taste good. They're all different kinds. They look really good. And I'm gonna use these beans, but I'm not gonna use that bean broth. I'm gonna create a new one. So I've got these vegetables cooking. And you can't really see, sorry about that. They're cooking with the lid on. And then I'm gonna put them in this, uh, this pot along with some other things. So what else am I going to put in here? I'm going to put in this tomatoes. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the with the beans right now. I'm going to put in a couple of bay leaves. Bay leaves are good, but be sure and take them out when your soup is done because they can be kind of sharp. And ooh, that that handle looks kind of hot. I'm going to turn the heat on this. All right, so I've got my, let me move you back here so you can see what I'm cooking and see me at the same time. All right, so that didn't work very well. Yeah, there we go. So I've got my pot here on the stove and I'm going to add some broth to it. I've got my Central Market broth that I like. Oh, and my, my pipes are frozen in here. So I don't have access to water. The pipes are frozen in my kitchen too. We have the plumber it's supposed to come, but there are a lot of people that have worse problems than us. So I put four cups of vegetable broth in here and I'm gonna add some water a little bit later. I'm not gonna add it right now because I didn't bring it in here and I don't have any water because my pipes are frozen. Terrible. So I've got my can of tomatoes. I've got four cups of vegetable stock, two bay leaves, and then I've got my vegetables. They're still cooking in here because I want them to cook really nicely before I add them to my soup. Because, you know, like I always tell you guys, we're trying to add flavor to our food, okay? We're trying to create some kind of goodness to our food, and since it's plant-based, and we don't use bacon and you know all these things, ham and sausage and whatever. We've got to create some caramelization and some kind of flavor. 
And the best way to do that is with vegetables because vegetables have natural sugars and they have their own liquid. So if you put them in a nice hot pan and you put some heat to them, they'll create these delicious aromas and flavor, but you have to let them cook. You can't just be impatient. Uh, let's see, Les says, uh, there is that new pan at work. Yep, that's the, the Valentine's pan is being used right now. So, and it's working fine. And my husband would be really happy to see me using the pan. And it, uh, it's a Le Creuset pan, which they conduct heat really well. So, you know, they work good. Let me turn it down a little bit. And I see somebody sent some stars, Carolyn Cunningham. She says, I enjoy all the classes and great ideas and great food. Thank you, Carolyn. And she sent 100 stars. Um, the stars program was implemented by Facebook to allow people to um, pay for stars. They're a penny each. So if you send them, Facebook accumulates these stars. And then um, from time to time, I see them in my account. I have like a Facebook account now. And they pay it every month. So if you buy a class from me, drinking my tea with my cup from London that my husband got me when he traveled to England for a business trip. This is um, chai tea. I'm going to get rid of my tea bag. Well, it's, it's really good on a cold day. So anyway, the, uh, the pan conducts heat well. I can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, the stars. Facebook does eventually pay me, although not that fast. Like, I kept thinking, well, a bunch of people took my class. Where's my money? And then they, they sent me a letter, and they said, uh, well, we pay according to this schedule, and it was like two months behind. So hopefully, eventually, I'll get the money that people paid. I think I will. All right, let's see if there's any questions. I see Penny Sullivan Green, Justine. So yeah, if you guys um, are nice enough to send me stars, I appreciate it, but please don't think that was my idea to put that on there. That's something that Facebook, um, they keep coming up. They're trying to compete with uh, YouTube and other things, you know, who have different incentives. The only thing about this pan is it's heavy. You have to have strong arms to pick up these Le Creuset pans. You can't just like one-handedly pick them up easily. And you guys know I lift weights, so I'm strong. All right, so I'm just putting these vegetables in here. I think I got most of them in here. So now what I have, I have my, I'm gonna move this over to this one. I've got my beautiful soup, which consists of the beans, I'm going to get you up closer so you can see. My soup consists of these really nice 15 bean blend that I showed you made from this. And it's really 14 beans, but we're going to call it 15 beans because that's what people are familiar with. And then I've got all the vegetables. You saw the different vegetables that I used. Let's see if I can get you to see it. So it has all the vegetables. It has some bay leaves. It has the can of Mexican flavored tomatoes. Um, there was really nothing in there, no seasonings. So now we can start thinking about what seasonings do we want to add? So, um, you know, I have your typical salt and pepper. <laughs> so we can put salt and pepper in here. So I'll put some freshly ground pepper. And I like to buy these. They're Alessi. You can get them at regular grocery stores. Or they have them at, um, we have this, we have this uh, grocery store that is like a super discount store that people go to. And sometimes they have spices. I can't remember the name of the store now. It'll come to me, but it's one of those, you know, uh, everything is marked down. I've seen that gourmet spice at, at some of these, you know, um, discount stores. So you can get them in different places. But any kind of freshly ground 
pepper is good. And then you know I've got my giant Lazy Susan of spices here. So this is where you can get creative. I think you can see it right here. Okay, it's this thing. You can get really creative because I could take things like your typical onion powder, just a little bit. I don't like to overdo it. I could throw in a little, that was garlic powder. I could throw in a little onion powder. You know, like, I'm talking like half a teaspoon. Uh, I always like cayenne pepper. I think cayenne pepper adds a nice little kick. Just a little, not much. Um, you know, what, what else can I add? I have things like sage, chili powder, oregano, coriander. Um, I think I'm gonna skip those, and today I'm gonna add this um, peppered habanero. And this was a thing I got from Fresh Jacks. And it's just a, it's got cayenne, habanero pepper, mustard seed, onion, garlic, parsley, and lemon zest. And since I bought it, I'm trying to use some of these things that I bought. But this is like using a spice blend. So whatever spice blend that you like, but it's called peppered habanero in case you're interested. And it was one of those things I ordered um, tofu scramble seasoning from this company. And so then I ordered a couple of, uh, you know, extra spices. So you can see that my bean soup is not very watery. It's, it is, but you know, it doesn't have a, it only has a very small amount of liquid over the beans, not a lot. And that's how I want it. I don't want to have, you know, a real watery bean soup. I can, I can add a little bit more water if I want to, but I purposely didn't add a lot of water to it because I want to taste it first. And if it's if it's too diluted, then I don't think I would like it. So this is kind of how I wanted it. And you know, I can taste the broth. I don't have a spoon, so I'll use a measuring spoon. Isn't that elegant? I can taste the broth and see how it tastes. It's pretty good. It, you know, it has a, a light tomato taste and I like it. I don't really think I want to add a lot more to it. See, I'm looking to see if there's any questions. So I probably want to cook, <clears throat> and the beans are already fully cooked, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the beans cooking anymore. They were already fully cooked. I cooked those beans. It took me about, I'd say two and a half hours, plus the 15 minutes where I boiled the beans. So it took probably almost three hours to cook the 15 bean blend to get it to where everything was tender. It was, it took quite a while. And that was after soaking them for 12 hours. So this is one of those things where you have to take some time with these beans. All right, so how am I gonna finish this off? Um, what, and I'll, I'll post a picture later, but you know, cause I've gotta let it cook for a little while, like 30 minutes. I'll bring it to a boil and I'll let this simmer for like, you know, 30 minutes, even a little bit longer to let all the flavors develop. But um, how I'm going to finish it is I think I'm gonna make these pasta, this pasta, even though I have to go into the laundry room to get water, because the water's frozen and my pipes in both kitchens. Pain. But I'm gonna use these little pasta, uh, two little pasta, it's um, ditalini, and I'm not gonna mix it in the soup, so I'm gonna have it on the side because if you put the pasta in your soup, it will swell up and then your soup just becomes really too thick. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my, this is my breakfast tofu. If you took my breakfast class, it's a breakfast tofu and it has a taste of kind of like um, maple and liquid smoke. So it's kind of like a ham almost. Um, it has a really good, sort of a meaty flavor and, and good taste, kind of sweet and a little salty. So I'm gonna cut it up and I'm just gonna put it on top. I'm not gonna mix it in there and cook because as I said before, and it's coming to a boil now, so I'm gonna let it simmer. As I said earlier, it's not quite at a boil. Um, like I said earlier, if you put tofu, cooked tofu in your soup, what will happen is the tofu will cook until it gets real pale 
and it will lose any flavor it had and it kind of it doesn't taste that good I've, I've tried that before so I've learned that the best way to use a cooked tofu when you make it and add it to something is just add it at the very end right before you eat it and then it still maintains its really good flavor so there you go that's that's this soup the 15 bean soup which is just nothing more than you know the the beans that I cooked with some vegetables whatever vegetables that you want uh, I think corn would be a nice addition to this soup I like corn and I could see myself adding some corn to this and uh, enjoying it but you know that's that's just me you don't have to um, also southwestern flavors you know like um, green chilies and you know um, cumin would be good in fact since I added uh, Mexican style tomatoes it would really make sense to add chili powder and cumin and make it almost like a, a chili flavor but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna try to keep it more neutral I'm, I could serve this with cornbread. I could serve it with, you know, some Dave's 21 bread or Dave's um, toast, good seed toast or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure yet how I'm going to serve it. I'll probably just eat, eat it plain and, you know, not eat it with a lot of uh, other food. But I'm sure it's going to be good. So that was the 15 bean soup. So that was our bean of the week, which is really save all your beans. Think ahead of time, you know, stick them in a jar or a bag or something. You don't have to put them in the freezer, just put them back in the cabinet and save them up for when you have a big sampling of beans, soak them for 12 hours or overnight and cook them for about two and a half to three hours. And then you can make this really good kind of a vegetable bean soup. And it's really a great day for this soup because... Oh my goodness, if you could only see, this is my Texas where it never gets that cold and we have all this snow on the ground and it's so cold here. It's amazingly cold. It's, uh, I think the temperature right now is 12 degrees. It never gets that cold here and it's just been crazy. The, all my pipes are frozen, even though we had everything dripping, they're still frozen. Our power is on, but I've heard that the power is off for a lot of people. So uh, my two sons who live half an hour away, both of them have lost power and it has not come back on. So they're waiting. So, um, you know, we're, we're not used to this. this. It doesn't get that cold. I think the last time we had this kind of weather here was in the 80s. So it was, you know, 30 years ago when we had this kind of weather. We're just not used to it. So we'll, we'll just make the best of it. All right, everyone. Well, there's our bean of the week. And I will, uh, I'll be making a YouTube video on Wednesday. I'm not sure what. I haven't decided. That's kind of weird. I usually have a, a good idea, but I'll, I'll make something depending on if our pipes are not frozen. Because I don't, it's really not fun to do a lot of cooking when you can't wash the dishes without going into the laundry room in another part of the house. So I may skip my YouTube video this week. Um, I want to show you my frozen uh, waterfall out here just because it's interesting. You can see it. The, uh, the water feature on the swimming pool is completely frozen. I'll take you outside so you can see it better. And our our pool is frozen with a layer of ice. So we're waiting on the pool people to tell us what to do because fortunately we have power, but we've been told that a lot of people don't have power. And then what happens is the pool equipment gets messed up. So we're dealing with things that we don't normally have to deal with here in our warm state of Texas. And you know, we, we just, we just aren't prepared for it, I guess. And hopefully I don't have to go anywhere because I don't want to get out on the streets. Um, hair dryer works great for frozen pipes. Yeah, well, we've had a space heater on the frozen pipes since this morning, but it's not thawing them out. And in fact, we think the pipes are in, uh, I'll show you where you can look. The frozen pipes are on this wall 
the stone wall on the outside of our house. So there's no way to get in there and get to the pipes. So that's kind of a problem. I don't know what we're gonna do. We're just hoping that they don't bust. So anyway, we're doing the best we can. So I don't know what my plans are for the rest of the week. My next cooking class is going to be on February the 27th. Hopefully things will be back to normal by then. And that's on Korean food. So you can sign up for that. You can go to my um, website and there's a link where you can sign up or just go to PayPal and, and uh, sign up that way. Just put the name of the class you wanna take. It's the same price, they're all $20. That's gonna be a really good class. I, I think you guys would like that. So sign up for the Korean dishes class. And um, today is day one of the 21 day challenge. So that's a good day to make this delicious soup because one of the things that really helped me, I'm stirring it around, one of the things that really helped me uh, with my weight loss and to really improve my health was eating a lot of soup and eating a lot of beans. It sounded like someone opened the door. And so this kind of thing, making your own fresh soup and beans is great. Uh, Terry says, she can't wait for the Korean class. Well, good, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be testing some of the recipes soon. As soon as I have water again, I'll be testing some of my recipes. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what the rest of the week holds for me, but today is day one of the 21 day challenge. So if you wanna join, go on my Chef Julia support group. Uh, Christine says, have you made split green pea soup? No, I have not because, my goodness, these birds, they're like cowbirds. I don't know if you guys have them. We call them, they're cowbirds. They're like zillions of them. It's like the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. They've discovered that we have bird seed. So they're constantly coming and they're scaring all the other birds off. It's like something out of a movie. But, um, <clears throat> so uh, the 21 day challenge, you can join, join my support group, Chef Julia support group. And I have not made split, oh, it was a split pea, split green pea soup. I don't know that I would like it. I have always, um, when I've tasted it in the past, I don't think I liked it. So then I just didn't ever wanna try to make it. So I guess, is it Christine Scotcher? If you really like it and you have a good recipe for it, send me your recipe and I will make it and see what I think. That's all I can tell you. Um, I do have uh, some kind of a split pea, like an Indian split pea bag of um, something in my pantry to make like how you would make Indian style lentils, but it's a like an Indian split pea. So that's something I might try to make, but I haven't made it yet. Uh, Sally Hastings said she grew up on split pea soup in Texas before we knew about lentils. Yeah, well, you know, and then the split pea soup I've always had was like ham where, you know, you boil a ham bone and then make split pea. Doll, yeah, Christine Scotcher. Yeah, there's some kind of a doll that's like a split pea. So um, if you have something that tastes really good, let me know. I'm willing to try it. Uh, that's just not something that I've enjoyed before. So things like that, you know, I tend to, if I had it one time and I didn't love it, then I don't want to make it again. But, you know, what a great day to make this pot of soup. It's warm, it's hearty, it's, you know, simmering here. It smells so good. And, you know, I could add add more spices to it. I could add pasta, I could serve it with brown rice. But even just by itself, just with all these different kinds of beans, a few tomatoes, a garlic, onion, carrot, celery, it tastes fine the way it is. But I'm gonna step it up by adding my little bit of cooked tofu on top and you know the pasta and that's gonna be our dinner tonight. And my husband has already told me he's gonna eat it. He doesn't always eat what I cook. Uh, he does want me to make him some garlic toast, which that's easy to make. So I'll make him some garlic bread. We'll have a nice big bowl of the 15 bean soup. 
I've started off the 15 day challenge by walking five miles this morning and uh, on the treadmill and uh, eating a, a really good breakfast and I'm not eating any more uh, Valentine chocolates. Uh, I had some dark chocolate around and I kind of nibbled on it last night thinking, well, it's Valentine's Day. I'm gonna nibble on a little chocolate, but not today. And so the, the um, 21 day challenge is going strong. So if you haven't joined that, come to the Chef Julia support group, join up, and then you can uh, do the 21 day challenge. So I hope you all make this delicious bean soup, this one here, and uh, let me know how it is. And I'll put the detailed recipe up here in just a few minutes. I'll go into uh, my computer as soon as I get done and I'll put it on there so you guys can make it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you watch my next video. Every Monday I do Bean of the Week, so next Monday I'll be doing something different. So thanks everybody, I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna sign off now, bye-bye.